Central banks globally have had a very busy week working in concert to calm the financial markets after the shake-up on Wall Street. Well, let's discuss the implications of these moves on Asian economies with Daniel So, regional economist and forex strategist at Forecast, and he joins us now on CES, along with Ray Barros, CEO of Ray Barros Trading Group, joining us from our newsroom. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Daniel, let me get to you first of all. You've got lots of different categories here yes. in terms of the winners and losers, but let me, let me just take the overall winners and the overall losers. You say that the Philippines, by far, is the biggest loser. If you talk about who is going to be most vulnerable to a global deceleration in growth. Um, Philippines will be the biggest loser because of the export diversification. It, it, it has a very poor export diversified. It's very poorly that. Uh, export diversified and it has the, one of the highest inflation risks in, in, in Asia and the fiscal support in terms of fiscal impulse and fiscal resources is not enough it's not, it's not enough to, to mitigate any economic risks mm -hmm. and the domestic demand are slowing and moreover we have some, some uh, political risks in, in the economy so this, this economy will, will face the the, the biggest stress from, from the economic downturn. But you could argue that a lot of the Asian economies, such as Hong Kong, Singapore, mm. Malaysia, we've all got a lot of export dependency, don't we? So yes. what makes some of the other economies more resilient? It's the effective exchange rate. For, for Singapore and Hong Kong, it's pretty bad if you look at it in terms of uh, uh, external vulnerability to the global deceleration. Inflation rate is pretty high in Singapore and Hong Kong because of the little slack left in the economy, but they have strong uh, fiscal support mm -hmm. and domestic uh, demand has been on a, on, on a strong note. But of course, when the, the global deceleration intensified, things might change. So they are also belongs to the second tier in, a, in the sense that from the lower spectrum, they are be belong to the second tier where they will see more risk. Mm. I mean, certainly every economy in Asia um, has its different levels of dependency on the mm. outside world. But nonetheless, if you compare their dependency uh, on the US as opposed to China, yes. uh, which would you say you know, has the biggest risk factor here? In terms of dependency on the US? It, well, I mean, you know, the US is obviously going through a bit of a crisis right now yes. in terms of financial markets, but China itself is having to take a complete about turn in terms of monetary policy because it mm. is increasingly more concerned about growth than inflation. Are you concerned about growth in China and what that will mean for the Asian economies? For China, the monetary condition in China has become unduly tight because real interest rate has been going up fast. If you look at food prices, food prices are softening in the, in the global, global setting. The CRB sub food index has shed 10% and China inflation is mainly driven by food. So if there's a fall in inflation expectation, we may see real interest rate heading up fast. Mm -hmm. And the reason why China has been tightening aggressively is because of negative real interest rate in the first place. And the real effective exchange rate also has been heading up fast, especially in June and July, where they accelerate the China UN appreciation against the USD. So this leads to a very uh, unsupportive monetary condition in China. Mm, yeah. Let's talk about some of the exchange rates because gone are the days when some of the uh, Asian central banks were intervening to try and slow down the rapid rise in their currencies. Now it's the other way, isn't it? They're trying to defend their currencies to ah, a yes, large degree. Yes. Korea is the one that is really popping to my <laughs> mind. Do you think it's a bit overdone, the selling? Yes, definitely. If you look at Korea, Korea is one of the more resilient economy in terms of fundamentals. Export are well diversified. The Effective exchange rate is very, very competitive, and uh, domestic demand, okay, that, that will be that, that will export. But fiscal, it has a stronger fiscal impulse index. It has, the government has the political will and fiscal capacity to drive the economy through. So, looking at the at the one market, it is overly excessive. It's in a, in a state of disequilibrium where speculative money has been steering excessive move in the market because mm. of the loss of credibility, loss of confidence. Exporters have withheld their, their, their offer, and that's why it's in a state of disequilibrium. Yeah, so maybe the selling has been overdone for KRW, but yes, where do you think indeed. we haven't seen the full impact yet in terms of potential deceleration in our Asian currencies? Thailand? Not really. Thailand is quite fundamentally strong. Well, political risks aside, the economic fundamentals are very strong and those currencies that has been hit badly in the AFC, government are more aggressive like Philippines, uh, Indonesia and Thailand. Because they, the, they have the memory. Yes, yes, yes. So, so for Thailand, it's pretty strong. So mm -hmm. I would see it's the Philippine peso. Philippine peso. Definitely, yes. There's more, more downside to go for, for the peso. Okay. Have you got any particular levels before we before we go? Uh, no. No. Okay, yes, but more downside to yes. see. Thank you very much for joining us.